So the next topic we're gonna to be talking about is with the block or the reset volley, the common tendency of keeping the paddle face too close. So again, when we talk about blocks, we wanna compare it kind of to the punch volley. With the punch volley, it's okay to have more of a closed paddle face because it's an aggressive shot that at times we even want to be able to go downward in the trajectory. But with the block volley, we want to use our height. We want to trust our height. This is a defensive shot where we're trying to get back to neutral. A lot of times we're sagged back with our positioning. So a good miss is high. We want to stay alive in that point. So rather than be totally closed, we want to really make sure that that paddle face is open to where when the ball hits it, it's gonna come up off the paddle, then all we have to worry about is just gauging the distance. We're basing how open the paddle face should be based off of the court position that you're in, right? Um, you know, but, but know that there's nothing wrong with hitting a block that's a little too high, but if it's shallow, they're not gonna be able to hurt you. So, so there's something to be said with that. So I think, I guess, don't be afraid. Maybe like this is like a common tendency like within itself. I think people are just afraid to use height in general, right, right. you know, and maybe not trust it. But if you take a look at some of the best defenders in the game, they utilize their height and they recognize that, hey, if I can, if I can hit a ball in a three and a half foot zone, I can totally neutralize the whole point. So, you know, obviously we don't want to use too much height, but we want to use it in a way where I, I guess if we do get height, we're just aiming for more of a shallow area and we're able to get away with it. Well, how often do, when people pop up a ball, they say, oh gosh, too high. Oh, I hit it too high. And so they're almost like people are it's, training it's their like minds. Yeah, to think that height is bad. Height is, for the most part, unless you get really extreme, height is a really good thing most of the time. Um, we just, when we blend height with distance, that's when pop ups happen. Correct. So, like Tyson talked about, being able to think shallow is good, but height equals high percentages of, of keeping the ball in place. So, we want a certain amount of height and probably more height on blocks than a lot of other shots that we're going to hit. Yeah, and I think, I think too, this is something to think about a little higher level, but when, when the Dura ball gets hot, and mushy, it doesn't bounce as high. So you can get away with defending better by using more height based off of the ball technology and based off of the ball being mushy. Yeah. So some, something to think about. Okay guys, so for the first drill that we're gonna do to make sure that we're having that nice open paddle face is a drill I call a double tap volleys, okay? So um, it's gonna be cooperative. Tyson's gonna hit a ball to me. Right when I, uh, the ball comes to me, I'm gonna stay nice and tight and tucked in like a block, but I'm gonna open my paddle face almost to a full extreme pancake. I'm gonna hit the ball up to myself in a controlled manner and then send it back and try to keep it going continuously. This drill is really, really good because of that first ball that I'm hitting up to myself. It simulates a lot of the things that we want on the block. We have to open our paddle face. The ball has to come up. We have to absorb it to control it in order to send the next ball back. So um, this one can take a little bit, even for, I would say, mid-level players. But once you get this down, it really simulates that feel of where we want to be on that block. Okay, so starting out here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit to Tyson. He's gonna hit the first one up to himself and send it back to me. I'll do the same. Notice how open that paddle face is on the first one. We're controlling, we're absorbing. The ball's not playing us. We're able to control the pace of the shot. We're using our bodies, we're getting low. Maybe a more advanced drill from this would be to alternate. Um, uh, block up with your backhand, uh, volley over with your forehand, okay. or block with your forehand, volley over with your backhand. Just can alternate, right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Forehand block, uh, backhand volley. Backhand block, forehand volley. Yeah. Forehand block, backhand volley. Very good. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Good. So the next drill that we want to work on, guys, is we want to make sure that we're, we're sending the signal to ourselves that a good miss is high, okay? So we want to make sure we're getting that contact point. Paddle face is nice and open. Uh, I'm going to be the teacher. Tyson's going to be the student here. I'm just going to have him start at the kitchen line, work his way gradually back to the kind of the transition zone back in here continuously, and then just work his way back in. And he's gauging his range. But what we want to challenge him with is to hit 10 balls, ideally in a row, but 10 balls that don't hit the net. So if he pops it up, that's okay. We wanna make sure that he's forcing his opponents to beat him and not getting beat by the net. So here we go. Okay, look at that height, look, plenty of margin for error. He's pausing at impact to control the depth. These are played nice and shallow. He would be able to get in and neutralize with so, just about any one of these right. balls. So hang on. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit some balls that are up a little higher, but they're gonna be shallow. Okay. I guess show us if you can hurt me. 
Okay, if okay. I can hurt you out of the air. Or, yeah. or, or, or even, Just even with it anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so here, here. Okay. So given how shallow that is and how far back Tyson is, even if I hit this aggressively, he has all the time in the world to stay alive, to stay ready in the point. I'm reaching in, I'm still having to hit up, even though that ball's coming with plenty of margin for error, because it's landing shallow, I've got to reach in and I can't get my full weight on that shot to take control of the point, okay? So all of his shots were high percentage, but because he's able to pause that paddle and keep uh, the contact very close to his body with that open paddle face, he's able to control the distance, play those shots shallow, and keep me from, from being very offensive. Okay, so now I'm, I'm the teacher, Kyle's a student. Kyle's gonna be uh, uh, working his way back to the transition zone and coming back up. Key thing here is that he has to hit 10 total uh, that land in the kitchen, correct? Land in the kitchen. Very good. Okay, here we go. Okay, he's got one. Oh, get over there. Two. Get over there. Three. Four. Good. Four. Here we go. Now, uh, let's say, uh, you know, if you don't make it in the kitchen, you just stay put. Okay. Okay. Like okay. Like so you got, you got four. Here you go. There's five. Beautiful. Six. I'll start working my way back okay. in. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, here we go. You got six. Nice sorry, ball. sorry, that's my fault. Sorry, here you go. Eight, nine, and ten. Beautiful. Okay, and guys, notice that when we're going back, we stop somewhere around mid-court. We don't keep going all the way to back here. And the reason for that is, in my opinion, if there is an area that's kind of called no man's land, it's probably a foot or two right inside the baseline, right? right? Even though our defense is better here than it is at the kitchen line, my philosophy is I don't practice a lot in here because if I'm here, I might as well be all the way back, right? If I'm gonna make my uh, attempt to come in, I'm usually gonna get at least to here. Otherwise, I probably just would have stayed all the way back behind the baseline. Okay guys, so uh, to recap, uh, what we talked about is the tendency of being too closed on that block volley. So we wanna make sure that we're opening up that paddle face. We wanna play with plenty of height, plenty of margin. Remember the block volley is usually a defensive shot where we're trying to get back to neutral. So there's really no reason to close that and play a ball that's flirting with the net, kind of a linear on a line drive. We wanna trust our height. Height equals time, um, equals, equals margin for error. It allows us to, to increase and get better uh, positioning on the court. Yeah, and it equals playing very good defense. And like I said, yeah. if you take a look at some of the best defenders, they, they I, 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 I love using the word like just trust. Like trust sure. your height, understand yeah. that you can play good defense. If you have time, it all kind of adds up. The, the first drill that we did was the double tap volley drill. Uh, the first ball you had to bump up to yourself and then you volleyed it over. Um, great drill to focus on opening up the face, keeping the paddle face still, keeping the hand, uh, keeping the hand positioning nice and controlled. We had the student slinking back to the uh, transition zone and slinking back up. The main theme was that they had to hit 10 uh, blocks with plenty of height in the kitchen. After they got their 10, then we switched roles. But know that not only is the st uh, student getting something out of this, but the teacher uh, is, is working on leaning in, taking balls out of the air, gauging their lean, you know, versus necessary and unnecessary, um, you know, taking speed ups off the bounce. Um, but the, uh, the teacher can be more so focused on speeding up out of the air or, or speeding up off the bounce. Hey guys, so the next game that uh, we're gonna do is gonna help with the block or the reset volley. Specifically for a lot of us, our contact point just isn't close enough to the body. We tend to have that contact point like more of an aggressive punch volley. So when we're thinking about that reset, we really wanna trust the amount of time and trust keeping it nice and close, letting the ball meet the paddle rather than the paddle going out and meeting the ball. That's gonna provide a little bit too much power and this shot is meant to absorb our opponent's pace to be able to give us uh, time to neutralize at the kitchen line. Yeah, a couple, couple of the corrective techniques that I think about when it comes to the block volley are meeting that first imaginary ball, um, using your legs as, as shock absorbers, keeping the beverage in hand. I think some of the common tendencies when it comes to pace being hit at somebody and they're trying to block is, is they flail their upper extremities and they're super loud. So take a look at some of the best defenders in the world. They are clean and their upper extremities are almost like a statue as they make contact, right? Yeah. Yep.
So for the game, guys, we're gonna be uh, situating, we're gonna have one player uh, feeding from the kitchen line. The other player is gonna sag back about three feet or so, just to give themselves a little bit more time. Um, so Tyson will be feeding to me um, a ball that I can work on that reset shot. At higher levels, we're gonna wanna make sure that we get maybe three or four of these in a row uh, in the kitchen. Uh, at lower levels, we're only looking to just get one to get that feel, and then we'll play the point out live. Okay, ready here? There's one, there we go, that's easier. Two, three, and we're live. <laughs> a, little, a little funk there, a little misdirection. Ready here? <laughs> I like it. Uh, uh, zero. Four, right. two, three. Nice. Sorry, sorry, Good. sorry, sorry. Uh, score is one to four. He started out three zero. Correct. Why? Because I have the advantage. One four. There's one. There's two. Something about this drill too. Since he is trying to get them in the kitchen, I'm more so kind of working on my step back play here. Right. 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 Um, okay. He's got two. There's three. Point is alive. Ugh. 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 Oh, that was sorry, pretty good. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That was pretty good. Okay, ready here again, again, again. The score is uh, a four two. Okay, okay, four, two, two four. Three. Here we go. There's one. Nice. There's two. Beautiful. There's three, and it's live. I'll work that back. In. <laughs> Look at oh. that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We'll switch. <laughs> Working the left foot over. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so if we'd be starting over again because I'm already established, playing a game to seven would be zero, three. Here we go. Uh, pop this one up. So remember guys, I'm gonna be semi-cooperative. That's a little bit long. I'm gonna be semi-cooperative until Tyson gets that third one in the kitchen. There's my three. There's three, okay. Now Thanks we're playing it out competitively. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Here we go, here we go. Okay, another one here. You guys gotta get three in the kitchen. Count it out. There's loud. one, two. A little long, we're gonna stay alive here. All right, okay. he's got two. 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 Yep. No points yet. There's the third, now we're live. <laughs> oh, he made it. Did it stay in? <laughs> he oh made it. Not my most athletic moment, but okay, I'll take it. But you see how um, Kyle's waiting for my three to get in the kitchen and then we're live. So more so this is a drill early yep. on and then once I get my three then we're live. So we're both getting a benefit to start out, right? Because I'm working like Tyson talked about on stepping back, finding that selective aggression, still trying to put the ball low with a controlled aggressive sort of tempo and then once we get to that third one where we're live now i'm trying to win the point right and and we're taking a point away if you miss it in the net we're, we're basically saying hey height is good you know if you're yep. going to be a good defender you have to trust your height you have to trust your margin you just cannot miss in here this right. net is not your friend here we, here go. we go there's one two, two in the kitchen and we are live <coughs> That's when it gets fun. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sorry. I'm coming back in. I'm coming. <laughs> ah. Hey. Ah. <laughs> that was a good point, man. Nice job. Oh, too good. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, guys. Game recap here. Uh, we worked on you know block volleys, making contact by your body, not getting too extended letting the ball come to you, use your shock absorbers, all those little corrective techniques. Um, as, as far as the game portion, super fun game, but know that you have to be cooperative kind of early on, yeah. um, especially if you're on the side where you're, where you're not hitting block volleys. Um, lower levels, let's say, you know, uh, three on below, you have to hit one block volley in the kitchen and then the point is live. Yeah. You know, higher levels, so let's say three, five, maybe two or three, uh, you know, let's say five oh level, four, four, five and above maybe like four or five, but the main focus is, um, you know, getting the correct number of blocks in the kitchen, coming in and then playing the point out. 
Yeah, so once we choose that number, again, that number is gonna be based on level of how many need to land in the kitchen, then we're live. But remember, prior to that, if it goes a little bit long, but is over the net, there's no penalty. We just kind of wait to hit that special number. But if during that time we happen to miss one in the net, we want to penalize ourselves more for the errors in the net because we never really gave ourselves a chance to win the point, didn't give our opponents a chance to maybe mess up. So we want to differentiate the penalty between pop-ups a little bit too high and then the ones where the points are definitely over because you missed in the net.